Thank you very much, and thank you to the original Lee Greenwood. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Great guy. Well, I just want to say a very big hello, Kentucky. Great place. It's great to be here in the home of a a group called the Wildcats. You ever hear of the Kentucky Wildcats? And by the way, they play in a very big arena. This place, look at this, wow. Hello up there. This is incredible. With thousands of proud, hardworking, freedom-loving American patriots, which is what you are. What you are. Tomorrow, the people of Kentucky will head to the polls, and you will vote to re-elect your terrific Republican governor, Matt Bevin. He's done a fantastic job. He's done a fantastic job. And we're sending a signal by doing that to the rest of the country, to the rest of the world, that the Republican Party, you know what we stand for, but you see what's happening with the Democrats, they have gone crazy. The do-nothing Democrats, and they're not getting it done. Under Republican leadership, the economy is booming. Wages are rising. Confidence is soaring. Kentucky is thriving like never, ever before. And America is stronger than ever before. Kentucky's unemployment rate has reached the lowest point in the history of our country. That's not fair. And I want to just tell you that you have incredible representatives, and the job that Matt Bevin has done as governor, he's had to do some things that you had to do, and he's done them unbelievably well. And it sets you up to be a rocket ship in the future. You had to do it. So I just want to thank him for having the courage to do what he had to do. But you have the best numbers you've ever had in the history of the state. And with the help of your Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, we have confirmed 157 judges to follow the Constitution as written. And we're supporting our police. We're rebuilding our military. We're defeating radical Islamic terrorists like never before. The monstrous animal known as al-Baghdadi is dead. And the man that took his place is dead also. American Special Forces gave the world's number one terrorist a one-way ticket to hell.
No enemy on Earth stands a chance against the awesome power of the United States military, which is now stronger than ever before. We've rebuilt it, and it was all made in America. All made in America. And our country is winning again, and our country is highly respected again. But while we are creating jobs and killing terrorists, the radical Democrats are going totally insane. They want to obliterate the rule of law, drive out faith from the public square, sire, and you know this, silence you online, confiscate your guns, You better be careful. The Second Amendment, very, very important, very precious. They are after your Second Amendment with us. Nobody's touching our Second Amendment. And that includes the gentleman that's running against Matt. They're after your Second Amendment. We can't let that happen. They want to indoctrinate your children, you know this. Destroy anyone who holds traditional American values. All you have to do is ask the boys from Covington Catholic High School. Some of whom are here tonight. The far left wants to impose their authoritarian ideology on the nation, telling you what to think, what to believe, and how you should live. They want to erase our traditions, our culture, our history, and our heroes. They want to subjugate you and break you to their will, but Kentucky will never be broken. Kentucky can't be broken. You're too strong and you're too smart. In their crazed thirst for power, the Democrats are trying to tear our country apart. First, Democrats engineered the Russia hoax, the most egregious fraud ever foisted upon the American people, the Russian hoax. Then they did the Mueller scam. You remember that, the Mueller scam. Two years, and they said nothing. And then Mr. Mueller testified. That was a wonderful day for me. And you remember last week, I don't know Tulsi Gabbard, but Hillary Clinton said that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian agent. I don't know Jill Stein. She's a greenie, and that's fine. She's a greenie, Jill Stein. But Jill Stein was an agent of Russia also. These people are crazy. <laughs> now corrupt politicians, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, they are corrupt. And Nancy, <laughs> unlike Kentucky, which is doing great, Nancy ought to stop wasting time go back to her district in San Francisco, help the homeless, get rid of the drugs, get rid of the needles that are lying all over the street, and all of the things that are washing into the ocean through their storm sewer system. What's happened to San Francisco and what's happened to so many other places run by the radical left Democrats, it's unbelievable, Los Angeles. You take a look at Los Angeles. Looks like a third world city. But go back to Nancy's area, look at what's happened. There's been no place in the country that's gone down like the area that Nancy Pelosi represents. And she's wasting all of her time. And you know what, it's backfiring, you see it. But the media and the Democrats have launched an even more brazen assault on our nation with a deranged, hyper-partisan, Impeachment with Kant. Impeachment. Think of it. So today, we just hit the highest number 
in the history of the stock market. And that's hundreds of days. So last week, think of this. In the history of our country, it's never done better. And by the way, that's not rich, that's not poor, that's for everybody. Your 401ks, how are you doing? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. People tell me that their wives, their husbands, all of a sudden they've been running the 401ks for years, and they totally lost respect for, let's say, the husband. Totally lost respect. Now they think he's a financial genius because he's up 74 percent. She says, darling, I love you. You are the most incredible, brilliant financial mind. And you know what? If the Democrats get in, that's not going down by 50 percent. That's going down to nothing. It's going to be worthless. It's going to be worthless. You'll have a depression the likes of which you've never seen. Mark my words, but hopefully we don't have to even think about it. And that was going to happen here. When we took over, that was going down in the wrong direction. And don't forget, that was zero interest. We're paying interest. In other words, people are now getting interest in their money. But that was with zero interest, real easy with zero interest. Last week, the Democrats voted to try and nullify the ballots of tens of millions of Americans, to be exact, 63 million people disgracing themselves and bringing shame upon the House of Representatives. They've been plotting to overthrow the election since the first hour that we won. And actually, before we won, they were plotting to overthrow this election. Before we won. Nineteen minutes after I took the oath of office, the disgusting Washington Post — look at all these people back there, look. Fake news media. It's the fake news. Look at all of them. What they don't know is that when we hang it up in five years, or nine years, or 13 years, or maybe 17 years. Or maybe, if I still have the strength, 21 years. See, now they're going crazy. Now they're saying, see, I told you he was a dictator. He wants to take charge and control of our country. These people are crazy. You have, you have one nut job on television. He's sitting down doing an interview recently, and he looks at the person he's interviewing, and he goes like he's in total depression. Total depression. And he goes, <laughs> good fans up there, thank you. He goes, you know he's going to win, don't you? You know he's going to win, like, like Deva said. The guy goes, well, we're going to fight, and we're going to — no, no, he's going to win. You know he's never leaving office, don't you? He's never going to leave office. These people are crazy. They're crazy. But that disgusting newspaper that's right there, the Washington Post, declared the campaign to impeach President Trump has just begun. All right, you can get them out. One person. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be very gentle. You know, every time I say, get him out of here, I end up getting sued. He says, you know, they say, oh, gee, he hurt my arm. All right, so be very gentle, please. I don't want to get sued. Please, very gentle. Very, very gentle. He's going home to mom. Thank you. 
By the way, do we love our law enforcement? And in the whole world, even on a Monday night, you know, I like the Monday nights because I think we're 58 and 0. That's a good record. Even for the Wildcats, that's a good. We're 58 and 0. But even on a Monday night, is there anything cooler than being at a Trump rally? Right? Is there Nothing cooler. With last week's vote, the far left has declared war on American democracy itself. These people are lunatics. In the face of these attacks, Republicans are the most unified that I've ever seen, and I've been watching them and been a big part of them for a long time. And the Democrats have never witnessed anything like it. And they know they're not going to win in 2020, so let's see, what can we do to win? But that's not working too well, you'll see. The American people are fed up with Democrat lies, hoaxes, slander. The Democrats' outrageous conduct has created an angry majority that will vote the do-nothing Democrats the hell out of office soon. Tomorrow, Kentucky has a chance to send the radical Democrats a message. You will vote to reject the Democrats' extremism, socialism, and corruption, and you will vote to reelect Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin, who's done a great job. Matt's a veteran. He's a patriot. He's done it all. He's been a very, very successful business leader. He put his whole life at stake to help this state, and the job he's done is incredible. Under his leadership, Kentucky has created over 57,000 new jobs. But I helped also. We worked together. Now, he is difficult. I have to say, you know, maybe it cost him the election, but it's okay. Here, look. He's such a pain. When he needs something for Kentucky, like money, like aid, like he wants me to call one of the many manufacturers now that are coming into Kentucky. Could you call the head of some company in Japan, please? I say, Matt, do I have to do it? Please, please. But isn't that really what you wanted, a governor? I mean, really. That's what you want. He's such a pain in the ass, but that's what you want. And the job he's done, one of the best in the country. Not the best, he's been incredible. Matt is strong on crime and tough on illegal immigration. Thank you. He's pro-worker, pro-life, and 100% pro-Second Amendment. And by the way, you're going to lose your Second Amendment if you vote in Democrats. You think I'm kidding. I see what they're saying. I watch what they're doing. They're calling me all the time. You will lose your Second Amendment as soon, I'm telling you, as sure as you're standing here. Is anybody sitting? Nobody ever sits. You can sit if you want. Nah, no, just stand. You know what they say, the fake news? Look, you've been standing. Nobody sat. I don't know. Is it that exciting? Nobody sat. You know what they say? No, you know what they say? They say, Trump only got one standing ovation because they stood at the beginning and they never sat down, but they don't say the second part. Uh, it's great, great, great spirit. You know why? You love our country. 
And you see what's happening. We have turned this big monster ship, we have turned it around. And we need so badly, you know, it's like you plant a tree. It takes a little, we have to get those roots to hold. We have the best unemployment numbers in the history of our country. So many things, so many things. The best employment numbers, we have the best of everything. And I think, I'm going to count, but I think it's like 118. I told you we have a record stock market today. I think about 100, I'm going to have to check it because, you know, with the fake news, if I'm off by a half a point. <laughs> if, it's, if it's 117 and not 118, even if I go under, they report it. They say he didn't tell the truth. It was really 119, but like a lot, over 100, where we had the highest stock market in our history. Think of that. That's incredible. But Matt Bevan has made record investments in education spending for Kentucky students. Education is so important to him. Matt Bevan will defend your Kentucky values. He loves his state from an all-out assault being waged on you from the extreme left. Not good. I can't even imagine how can you vote for somebody from the extreme left? You know, this guy, Bashir, is a major lefty. You know that, right? Why are we even wait? Let's just have a good time. Are you sure we need an election tomorrow, Matt? I don't know. How does Kentucky vote for a person? I'm telling you, he will always vote for Pelosi and Schumer and Shifty Schiff. How about this guy? How about Schiff? He makes up a conversation. He gets up before the United States Congress. He repeats my conversation with the head of the Ukraine, the new president, a good guy, repeats it. I said, I never said that. He made a horrible statement. It was a total lie. And then I actually went and released the actual conversation. And you haven't heard about the whistleblower after that, have you? Because the whistleblower said lots of things that weren't so good, folks. You're going to find out. But these are very dishonest people, shifty shift. But Matt's running against these people, and we have to send them a sign because they're dangerous. The radical left's named Andy Beshear, who rejects everything Kentucky stands for. That's who they want to win. Bashir has openly pledged to stop the policies of Donald Trump. What are the policies? Take care of our vets. Take care of our military. We want jobs. We want companies to stop leaving us. They're not leaving anymore. You see, companies aren't leaving anymore. Have you noticed? Remember years ago, before I ever thought of doing this, I mean, when I said, let's do this, I said to our great now First Lady, I said, Melania, let's give it a shot. And then, one by one, we were doing good. And what we've done, if you remember before we ran, companies were leaving Kentucky, they were leaving, they were going to Mexico, they were going to China, Japan, they were going all over. Any place but Kentucky, you don't read about that at all. Now they're all coming back. They're all coming back. But Bashir wants to shut down your coal, shut down your energy, raise your taxes, and take a giant wrecking ball to the greatest economy in the history of the state of Kentucky, the greatest economy you've ever had. He's going to destroy it. And it won't be long. It'll go very quickly. You know, you're all sitting there. Everybody has good jobs. You don't like it. You go find another job. It's like the choice I got for military. I got you choice, too. If you don't like your job, you find another one. You tell the boss, hey, I'm getting out of here. I don't like this guy. You go get a better job for more money. Bashir doesn't represent you. He represents the Washington swamp, and he's backed by the same people trying to overthrow the last election. Bashir supported crooked Hillary Clinton, and he's funded by the pro-abortion lobby, and open borders fanatics. Open borders, let everyone pour right in. Let them all pour right in. Bashir wants to bring sanctuary cities to Kentucky. Think of that one. Releasing violent criminals and aliens to terrorize innocent Kentucky families. He wants sanctuary cities. He hasn't learned what's happened. 
You know, we had a great election a couple of weeks ago in North Carolina. We won two House seats. We were supposed to lose probably both of them. And we won them by a lot. We won them by a lot. And I think we won them because of the Second Amendment, because it's under assault from Democrats. But I think we won also because of sanctuary cities, because some bad news came out of sanctuary cities, really bad. And I think that was a reason we won both House seats by a lot. Bashir is too liberal, too extreme, and too dangerous for the state of Kentucky. Tomorrow, everybody needs to vote Republican. We got to go Republican all the way. And I want to bring up a man, and I'm, I'm serious about this. This guy works so hard. He's a, a great natural talent in business, which you needed. And he straightened it out. And I'll tell you what, he will be one of the truly greats in the history and maybe the greatest in the history of this state. Matt Bevin. Come on up, Matt. How do you like having President Trump in Rupp Arena? This is better. This is better than the Final Four, I'll tell you what, in terms of energy. This is extraordinary. Thank you, Kentucky. It is critical that we go top to bottom, run the slate, vote straight Republican, but do your civic duty. Let's get out and vote. Let's send a message to Washington, to the other states, to the United States of America, that Kentucky is leading the way and that we support the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. So we're also joined tonight by a very powerful man in Washington, your great Senator Mitch McConnell. Nobody works harder for Kentucky than Mitch, I will tell you. Nobody works harder. And frankly, maybe more importantly, nobody works smarter. It's up here. I know a lot of people that work hard. He works smart. When the Democrat arsonist in Washington tried to destroy an innocent man named Brett Kavanaugh, now Justice Brett Kavanaugh, Mitch refused to cave to the left-wing mob. And that's what it was. It was a mob. There has never been a man treated so badly in Washington as Judge Kavanaugh. Previously judged, now Justice. We got him in, and he's been great, and he will be great. Mitch confirmed two tremendous Supreme Court justices. Mitch helped deliver the largest ever investment in our military and passed VA choice and VA accountability for our amazing veterans. Now, I know Mitch's opponent because they came here, if you remember last year, slightly different location, and that's okay. It was still the great state of Kentucky. Because Andy Barr had Amy McGrath, an extreme liberal, against him. And Andy Barr is here with us tonight, and we're going to introduce him, but he beat her. So she said to herself, well, you know, I failed in Congress. Now let's go for the Senate. She wanted to go to the House, now she wants to go. It's not going to work that way. Extreme liberal, anti-gun, lots of different things. Amy McGrath compared my election. Think of this one. It's so insulting. I shouldn't say it. Should I say it? Yeah, why not? No, it's so insulting. You know, you work so hard, you love your country so much, and they get up to say things. She compared it to 9-11. 
a slander upon our nation. She wants open borders. She supports the impeachment hoax, witch hunt, like nobody. Yeah, she wants to get rid of me. She wasn't too happy with me last year. We came in, Andy, and we did a job on her. And this is going to be easy. And she was caught telling donors, Democrats, that she is further left than anyone in the history of the state of Kentucky. It's not what you want. It's not what you want. So next November, the state needs to defend its values and vote for rock-ribbed Kentucky conservative Mitch McConnell. But we're going to get back to that later. We'll be back many times. We'll be back here many times. Mitch. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for making America great again. And Matt Bevin is making Kentucky great again, thanks to your help tonight. And working together, we're changing the federal courts forever. Nobody's done more to change the court system in the history of our country than Donald Trump. And Mr. President, we're going to keep on doing it. My motto is leave no vacancy behind. So President Obama left Mitch and me and Rand and all of us. He left 142 openings for judges. You're not supposed to allow any. You don't do that. You know, they say the most important thing a president can do is federal judges, right? Including the Supreme Court, obviously. And I came in and I said, how many do we have? And they said, how many what, sir? I said, judge openings. And I thought they'd say none or one or two. He said, sir, we have 142. I said, what? I said, tell me again. He said, we have 142. So Mitch and I and Rand would like to thank very much President Obama, because nobody has ever been so generous in their life. Also with us tonight is a great warrior and a great guy, smart, strong, loves your state, and he's really become a good friend of mine. And I'll tell you, he's a little bit different. It's okay. But I, whenever I've needed him, whenever I needed him, he was always there. It's true. I mean, sometimes, like, I'd say, I don't need your vote, Rand. Good. And he'll vote his own way. Got that little libertarian touch. That's okay. That's okay. But whenever we need, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about we. We need a vote. He's so incredible and he's become a really good friend. And I want to have him come up for a second. Rand Paul, your senator, a great warrior. President Trump has great courage. He faces down the fake media every day. But Congress needs to step up and have equal courage to defend the president. Hunter Biden made $50,000 a month. That's the definition of corruption. 
We know he got it only because of his family connections. We also now know the name of the whistleblower. The whistleblower needs to come before Congress as a material witness because he worked for Joe Biden at the same time Hunter Biden was getting money from corrupt oligarchs. I say tonight to the media, do your job and print his name. And I say this to my fellow colleagues in Congress, to every Republican in Washington, step up and subpoena Hunter Biden and subpoena the whistleblower. And I say to my colleagues, if Shifty Schiff will not let Hunter Biden come, and if you will not bring the whistleblower for, every Republican in Congress should take a walk and say, this is a farce. Wow, that was excellent. Whoa. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. I've always said it. Also with us tonight are representatives from your state that are fantastic. A couple from outside your state, but we'll welcome them also, right? But these are also great fighters, great warriors. Hal Rogers. <laughs> Brett Guthrie. Thank you, Brett. Thomas Massey. Man, we just spoke about one a great race, Andy Barr. James Comer. James. Great. And from an incredible state that we won, 2016, that Crooked Hillary said she's going to win that state. Didn't come too close at winning that state. It's a great state, and we love the people of North Carolina, Congressman Mark Meadows. <laughs> Along with some of your local great politicians and a person that's done a really spectacular job, you know, in Michigan, a woman, she just kept going. She just kept going. Reminded me, by the way, of your governor from the standpoint she never quit. Now, Republicans hadn't won Michigan in many, many years. She'd call, could you come again? Could you do it again? Could you come make another speech, please? I say, all right, this is the last one. No, 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 how about a couple of more? <laughs> and then Bill Clinton actually told Hillary Clinton, you better get going, something's going on in Michigan. You're going to lose Michigan. You better start going, no, no, no. The polls say everything's good. And we won the great state of Michigan for the first time in many years. And I said when it came time to picking the Republican party chair, head of the RNC, I said, I got to get the woman from Michigan, Ronna McDaniel, to head it up. And when they were saying how sophisticated Hillary Clinton's campaign was, you know, we're not sophisticated, right? I don't think so. Remember, we're all doing the campaign. Well, she's got the finest computer technology in the world. Yeah, she paid, she paid for it, but she didn't get it. She has really fantastic geniuses, but I had somebody that was a lot better than the people that she had. And his name was Brad. 
Parscale, and he's here with us. Campaign doing a great job. And our numbers are looking very good. But think of it. We're one day short of a year now. Can you believe it? Less than a year it begins, November 3rd this time. We had that great, great date. Oh, boy, November 8th, remember? Was there ever a day like that in television history? And they have no idea. Because when we do hang it up, they're all out of business. They know that. That's why I think that we will get, I expect to get a full, hearty, unbelievable endorsement very soon from the failing New York Times and from the Amazon Washington Post. You know, before the election started, about a month before I announced that I was going to do this, I said, I'm going to become a politician. I can't believe it. I'm going to become a politician. But I looked at the New York Times, and it was like a little leaflet that you hand out at a grocery store, right? The wind would blow it away. It was dead. I call it the failing New York Times only because eventually it will fail. But we built it up. They do stories. In my entire life, I had a few stories on the front page of the New York Times. And now if I have three or four a day, it's like, why are they not covering me anymore? And they're all bad. They only — they can take what we did two weeks ago with the number one terrorist in the world, and they make it look as bad as possible. In fact, I love dogs, but they gave the dog full credit. They didn't give me any credit. That's okay. The dog got the credit, and the dog will be coming very shortly, by the way, to the White House. But they'll be endorsing us. And you know, all of these crazy, like CNN with its bad ratings, there goes its red light. It just went off. The red light just went off. <laughs> CNN. Well, it's hard. Look, put yourself in their position. They have it on, they're covering, and now they know they're ready to get hit. So they turn it off. I mean, I can't blame. No, the red light just went off. No, but put yourself in CNN's position. Without us, you know, cable was not supposed to be a good business. Then we came along. It's not me. It's we. They came from the valleys. They came from everywhere, the cities. They came from places. They're still trying to figure out, where the hell did all those people come from? So, a great senator from Tennessee, they have early voting. And I was in Pennsylvania making a speech, and he saw me because he had a couple of great congressman friends from Pennsylvania. And he said, you know, in Tennessee, we have very early voting. And I just left, and I've been doing this for 24 years. And I got to be honest with you, I've never seen so many people vote. And these are people, they love our country, they're incredible, they work hard, but they never liked what they were voting for, so they really wouldn't vote. Sounds terrible, but they didn't like anything that they saw. They say, sir, I'm seeing people, and he said this, come out from the valleys, come out from the mountains, come out from areas that they've never come out. We have lines that are five blocks long at every voting booth and parlor. And he said, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but if the rest of the countries like Tennessee, you're going to have the greatest victory in the history of our nation, and that's what happened. That was a great statement. That was a great statement from people from a great state also. Tomorrow, you must elect the entire Republican ticket from governor on down, including your next lieutenant governor, Ralph Alvarado. Ralph Alvarado. You're a good man. And your next Attorney General, Daniel Cameron. Should I bring Daniel up? Get up here, Daniel. Here's a star. Here's a star. Okay. 
Mr. President, I hope you can tell that Kentucky is Trump country. We are proud to stand with you on pro-life issues. In here in the Commonwealth, we are going to stand up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And Mr. President, we are going to stand with you in protecting the Second Amendment rights of all Kentuckians. And Mr. President, I make a personal commitment to you as the next Attorney General. We are going to make sure that Kentucky is never a sanctuary state. Thank you, Daniel. Star. A star is born. A star is born. Did you ever see that movie? A star is born. Thank you, Daniel. Great. Your next Secretary of State, Michael Adams. Auditor Mark Harmon. Thank you, Mark. Treasurer Allison Ball. She's doing great. And Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles. With the help of everyone here, America is the hottest economy anywhere in the world by far. Foreign leaders come in to see me. Congratulations on your economy. China's doing poorly, as you know. But they're paying us billions and billions and billions of dollars, and they've never given us 10 cents before. Billions of dollars. They gave a lot of that money to our farmers who got targeted, but no longer. They're back buying from our farmers. But we've created 6.7 million new jobs since the election. And if I would have ever said that during the campaign, the fake news back there would have never let me hear the end of it. Think of that, 6.7. And today, just today, a record 158 million Americans are now employed, the highest level of employment in our country's history. African-American unemployment just dropped to the lowest level ever recorded in the history of our country. Hispanic-American and Asian-American unemployment rates have also reached the all-time historic lows, the history of our country. Hourly earnings, listen to this, are up 9% since the election. Nobody ever thought that was going to be happening. Under the previous two administrations, we lost 60,000 factories. I thought that was a typo. I said, how the hell can you lose 60,000? It turned out to be right. And you know how I know? Because I've been saying it for two years and they never corrected me. <laughs> sure. Two years. I get a call sometimes from the people on the campaign, sir, sir, we have an emergency. What's the emergency? Somebody's calling from the media, the fake news. Did you put a comma in the wrong location, sir? <laughs> because they consider it to be a front page story. Okay. Under my administration, we've added nearly 10,000 new factories, and many, many more thousands of factories are coming into our country. We reversed it. To get relief to working families, we passed massive tax cuts. Massive. To lift up distressed communities, our tax law created opportunity zones. Tim Scott of South Carolina was so involved, including 144 designated by your great governor. By the way, the other governor. I don't think we'll, I don't know, you know, he's not going to do so well. He'll be calling for a meeting and I won't be able to see him because I don't like him very much. 
But I like this one very much, and we're going to help. We slashed a record number of job-killing regulations. We ended the war on American energy. We're now the largest producer of energy anywhere in the world by far. And we ended the war on beautiful, clean coal. I announced the withdrawal of the United States from the horrible, costly, one-sided Paris Climate Accord. Ask them how they're doing in Paris with it. Not too good. I canceled the so-called Clean Power Plan and repealed Obama's federal coal moratorium. We're putting our great miners back to work. On trade, we're starting to set records every week. We're reversing decades of Washington disloyalty, stupidity, and corruption. Past administrations did nothing as China looted our factories and stole up to $500 billion of American dollars. By the way, people can't even believe it. Not 500 million, that's a lot. If you lost 500 million, that's a lot. I thought that was another typo. $500 billion they would take a year from us. We rebuilt China. And I give them a lot of credit, by the way. I give China. What I don't give credit to is Obama and past administrations beyond Obama. I don't give them credit because they let it happen. They should have never let it happen. But now we're taking in tens of billions and billions and billions of dollars. Just recently, very slow, Sleepy Joe, Biden, that is, said of China's piracy and plunder, they're not that bad, folks. He always used the word folks. I watched him today. He used the word folks. Hi, folks. Hi. Hi. My time is up. I got to leave. <laughs> now they have them all freaked out because he makes a mistake every time he speaks. So I can just see these handlers because they're handlers. Like they use on horses, they're handlers, right? All right, get him off now. He's been up there long enough. So they're screaming, get off, get off. Sleepy Joe, get off the stage, please, please. Joe, you're doing fine. Joe, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. And then he goes, I love being in Ohio. But he was in Iowa yesterday. You saw. And they say, damn it, he should have left sooner. We told him, get off the stage, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe, get off the damn stage. But he said about Sleepy Joe, about China, they're not that bad, folks. They're not really competition for us. No, they're not. 500 billion a year, right? He did nothing in eight years, him and Obama. In fact, I'm here because of them, when you think about it, right? <laughs> I'm here because of them. Kellyanne Conway, stand up, Kellyanne. Another warrior. I just saw Kellyanne. I said, stand No, but think of it, of somebody saying that. Now look, the $1.5 billion that Hunter, who got thrown out of the Navy, who had no experience, who had no anything, got a lot of money from Ukraine, but he got $1.5 billion from China. I got to tell you, I've been negotiating with China. They're very tough. That is not the same group of Chinese people that I've been negotiating with. They gave him $1.5 billion. He'll make millions and millions with that. And how about saying, by the way, Mr. President, would you please take over the negotiations that President Trump is no longer handling? Guess what? You would be sold down the tube so fast. And we're so close. China wants to make a deal so badly. I think they'd love to see another president. I think, would they like, they would like to see another president more than Crooked Hillary would, okay? Can you imagine if they ever took over negotiations of this deal, which is going to be one of the greatest deals ever made? Has to be. Because we started down here and they were up there. Has to be. 
Can you imagine if they ever took over negotiations? This is what China would love more than anything else. It's not going to happen, folks, because we can't let our country go back to hell. We can't do it. We can't let it happen. Because the Bidens got rich while America was robbed. And let me tell you, the fake news will not put it in. I watched the last debate, and this weakling named Anderson Cooper saying, well, it's totally unsubstantiated. Mr. Biden, it's totally unsubstantiated. What's unsubstantiated? He is on tape doing a real quid pro quo. <laughs> sir, it's totally unsubstantiated, sir. I've never seen anything like it. Could you imagine if I did what he did? Could you imagine if Don Jr. or Eric Trump walked out of China while I was, let's say, vice president or president? Let's say they walked out of China with 1.5 billion. Do you think the press would be saying, well, it's unsubstantiated? <laughs> no, it's something. Let me just tell you something. These people, not all of them, but these people are very dishonest people, okay? <laughs> very, very dishonest people. But under this administration, the great betrayal is over. America is not for sale. And we're more determined than ever to drain the swamp. And that's what we're doing with these crazy people. A lot of bad things happened, and a lot of bad things, I think, are going to be revealed because there's no way we can allow them to get away with what they what if, with a normal person gotten away with, let's face it, these are bad people. Thanks to my tariffs, we will soon have over $100 billion from a country that didn't want to do anything with us. And I'll tell you, they started buying our farm product. You see that? They started buying a lot of our product, even before the deals are done. Last year, I got our farmers $16 billion because they were targeted. And the year before, I got them $12 billion. I just took them out of the tariffs, so we had a lot left over. And I said, congratulations, farmers. I love you. I love our farmers. They love me. That's why they did. They targeted our farmers. I said, congratulations. That's compliments of China. And they do. They want to make a deal so badly, frankly, honestly. They want to make a deal a lot more than I want to make a deal. That's the way it is, because we're doing very well right now with China. We're replacing the NAFTA disaster with the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, a huge win for Kentucky farmers, for Kentucky auto workers, for Kentucky manufacturers. Unfortunately, Nancy Pelosi so far and the do-nothing Democrats don't want to give the people of our country a victory. It's really, let it be a bipartisan deal. I don't care. It's such an incredible deal for this country. And NAFTA was one of the worst deals ever made. Democrats need to pass the U.S. MCA. We need their votes. Otherwise, you can't pass it. And it's up to Pelosi who has to put it forward. But she's too busy wasting her time. So either pass it or go back to San Francisco and clean up your mess. The Obama-Biden administration's Trans-Pacific Partnership would have dealt the death blow to the American auto industry. That would have been one of the great catastrophes. My first week in office, I canceled that job-killing travesty. You know all about it. Under our policies just days ago, Ford and the UAW announced a $1 billion investment in Louisville. One billion. Before my election, our leaders used the great American middle class as a piggy bank to fund their delusional global projects. They were globalists. I was elected to be President of the United States, not President of the globe. They decimated American manufacturing to promote economic growth in foreign countries. Tell me, how is that good? They try and convince you it's good. 
I was a very good student. I'm a very, like, we're all smart. We sit back, we listen. And I say, these people are something wrong with them. They, <laughs> only in Kentucky can somebody be so precise. You're right about, you are right about that. They deployed our military to protect immensely wealthy nations, subsidizing their welfare states with your money. The money we spend on other countries' militaries, but it's coming down. And I'm telling other countries, I'm sorry, you're going to have to pay now. I'm sorry, pay, pay. Pay, you got to pay. And they poured precious American blood and treasure into the Middle East while our great cities fell into decay and disrepair. We go in for internet. We want rural. We're bringing it in. We're bringing 5G into places like Kentucky that haven't been properly served. We're bringing it in all over the Middle West, all over the country. And we're really ahead of schedule. We're doing really well. People will be very surprised soon when some numbers come out. But we're doing very well. But you were very much underserved for years. And yet we're investing billions and billions of dollars in places you've never even heard of. Doesn't make sense, does it? But after years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. We are finally putting America first. Yet the deep state and the failed ruling class are trying to resist any changes to their failed policies of the past. They believe it is their right to rule over you and to redistribute your wealth all around the world. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's why we ended the Paris Accord. That's why we, we've ended a lot. I don't even want to tell you. But the sellout of the American nation ended the day I took the oath of office, and you understand that. <laughs> Past leaders transformed faraway nations into chaotic war zones. Then they demanded that America accept unlimited migration from those terror-afflicted regions. Take the people. Take the people. We defeated ISIS. We, when I took over three years ago, when we took over, when I took over, ISIS was all over. I defeated ISIS. You know, I didn't even know to what extent. I was watching the other night the great Lou Dobbs, and he said when Trump took over, President Trump, he used to say, Trump is a great president. Then he said, Trump is the greatest president since Ronald Reagan. Then he said, then he said, no, no, Trump is an even better president than Ronald Reagan. And now he's got me down as the greatest president in the history of our country, including George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. We love you, too. But we didn't fight them over there only to invite them over here. We didn't do that. We're not doing that. You see what we're going, and you see what we're doing, and you see it's never easy because I get hit by this swamp 15 different ways. But it doesn't matter. We're doing the right thing to protect our communities. My administration implemented the travel ban on some of the world's most dangerous countries. A lot of people were against it. They said, isn't that terrible? Countries that have crime rates that are so high, you wouldn't even believe it's possible. And we have a travel ban now. We don't take people from those countries. I'm sorry. And we won a historic victory on the travel ban in the United States Supreme Court, ruled it totally constitutional. On no issue have Democrats more totally betrayed you than on immigration. Democrats want open borders. They want to give illegal aliens free health care, free education, more advantages than our own citizens have, and more benefits than our own military gets. In the Republican Party, we believe taking care of our own citizens first is paramount. 
Thanks to our tireless efforts to secure our southern border, illegal crossings have dropped 60 percent since May. The wall is being built. It's going up rapidly. It's got a big impact. And I want to thank Mexico. We have 27,000 Mexican soldiers on our border, policing our border, because the Democrats will not do anything to end loopholes. It would take us 15 minutes so we could end the loopholes. Think of the word loopholes. They don't want to end the loophole. If you want to keep violent criminal aliens out of your communities, you have only one choice tomorrow, and that's to vote for Matt Bevan. Democrats are becoming more extreme and militant by the day. The Democrats' planned government takeover of health care would obliterate Medicare. What are they doing? I will always protect Medicare for our nation's seniors. It's going to be protected. What they're doing is crazy. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. And we will also protect you with pre-existing physicians. How about that? Pre-existing physicians. First time I've ever said that. Just thought of that. True. Because under their plan, you don't get your own doctor. You know what you get? Whatever the hell you get, that's what you get. Oh, great, Doc. Fix me up, Doc. You mean you want to work on my heart? Who are you, Doc? I don't think so. Thanks to our campaign to combat the opioid epidemic, with your governor's help, we have seen a 17 percent drop in overdose deaths in Kentucky, which is a record. <laughs> Democrats have also waged an unrelenting assault against people of faith. Anybody in here a person of faith? Great people. The last administration threatened adoption and foster care agencies purely for their religious beliefs. Last week, my administration took action to stop that Obama-era assault. It was an assault. And Governor Matt Bevin is a national leader on behalf of vulnerable children, and there's no better leader than him, what he has done. And together, we're fighting for American orphans, foster families, and the sacred rights of religious believers. And he's done a fantastic job. Virtually every top Democrat also now supports late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from their mother's womb right up until the moment of birth. And that's why I've asked Congress to prohibit extreme late-term abortion because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift from God. <laughs> Democrats are now the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, socialism, and blatant corruption. The Republican Party is the party of the American worker, the American family, the American dream, and it's the party of the great Abraham Lincoln. We forgot that, right? Abraham Lincoln. The incredible rebuilding of our military includes over $100 billion investments all across the state of Kentucky. I withdrew our nation from the horrible one-sided Iran nuclear deal. It's not the same country. When I came in that country, there were 18 different sites of confliction, they called it. And now they're a little different, a little different. We'll see what happens with Iran. And I recognized Israel's true capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. For years, you watched as your politicians apologized for America. Remember? He'd go around, oh, thank you so much. He wouldn't apologize to you, but he apologized to others. 
Now you have a president who is standing up for America, and we are standing up for the people of Kentucky. The next step to victory begins tomorrow, and it begins with all of you. You have to do this. Look, maybe you'll be late for work. Maybe you'll be late for whatever. I don't want to know everything. Okay, some things I don't want to know. But you have to just put it off. You have to go vote. It's so important. Tomorrow is so — because, you know, beyond even the governorship, and it's so important. Because, you see, again, your state is setting records. In the history of your state, you've never done this well economically, job-wise, unemployment, employment. Factories moving in, new factories open, expansion of your car plants. You've never done this well, but you're sending that big message to the rest of the country. It's so important. You got to get your friends. You got to vote. Because if you lose, it sends a really bad message. It just sends a bad, and they will build it up. Here's the story. If you win, they're going to make it like ho-hum. And if you lose, they're going to say, Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. And you know what? You can't let that happen to your incredible state, Kentucky. You can't let that happen. That would be a disaster for your state. Because you'd be losing an incredible governor, but you're going to have a great victory tomorrow. With your support, you have to go out of it. We will show the corrupt Democrats that the American people are not backing down, and we will never, ever back down. So tomorrow, we need you to go out and get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors. Get out and vote for Governor Matt Bevin and all of these great Republicans tonight. With your help, we will lift millions more of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. Together, we will elect a Republican Congress 2020, we're going to be elect because of their stupidity. These people are on the run. And I will campaign in every one of those states that were so corrupt if they raised their hand. And don't forget, out of 194, we got 194. Not one Republican left us last week. And two Republicans, think of that. And the other three couldn't get there because of it, but they were votes. They said they were totally votes. They had airport problems. I said, you can't do that, airport problems. But then we had the Democrats. We picked up two Democrats, so we had bipartisan support. That's unusual. I always say, because they're lousy politicians, they've got lousy policy, but they do stick together. That's about it. We will elect a Republican Congress in 2020. I will have a great Speaker of the House in Kevin. We're going to create a fair, safe, sane, and lawful system of immigration. We'll enact trade deals that result in more products proudly stamped with those beautiful words made in the USA. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine, finding new cures for childhood cancer, and ending, listen to this, the AIDS epidemic in America within less than 10 years. We've already started. Who would have thought we could have done that? We've started. And the past administration, toward the end, we had certain things that we could have done. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything, but we did. We have it all funded. And we've started to think of that. AIDS, within 10 years, will be out of this country. Nobody would have thought that was possible. We will end it. Great. Great. They came into my office. They were telling me about the breakthroughs that have been made. It's incredible what they're doing. And don't forget Right to Try, by the way, where somebody who's terminally ill can now use our medicines, which they were never allowed to in the past. So instead of traveling to Asia, and Europe, and all over the world, or going home hopeless and dying, they can now use what we call right to try. We have the greatest doctors, the greatest drugs, greatest labs in the world. They can now go and try. And we are having unbelievable success. Unbelievable. Right to try. 
We will chart a new era of discovery in space, and someday soon we will land on, believe it or not, the surface of the moon only to go to Mars. You know, I said, we've done the moon. No, they say, sir, we land on the moon to go to Mars, and that's what we're doing with the moon, and we are really, really advanced. It's moving along rapidly. We will defend privacy, free speech, free assembly, religious liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. And above all, we will never stop fighting for the cherished values that bind us together as one America. We support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. We stand with the incredible heroes and warriors of law enforcement. We believe in the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We believe that faith and family, not government and bureaucracy, are the true American way. We believe that children should be taught to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. Loyal citizens like you help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. The great state of Kentucky was settled by some of the most devoted and courageous people ever to walk on the face of the earth. These tough pioneer men and strong pioneer women braved the wilderness and defied the danger to build a life and to build a home. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families. They loved their country. And they loved their God. These proud Kentucky patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others try to erase their legacy, and destroy their magnificent heritage. Our allegiance is to our nation, our loyalty is to our citizens, and our devotion is to our Creator. For the sake of our freedom, for the sake of our children, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement. We are one people. We are one family and one glorious nation under God. America is thriving like never before. And ladies and gentlemen of Kentucky, the best is yet to come. Together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Kentucky. Thank you. Go out and vote.